Welcome to Tech Notice. It's time to test this 12 and 900K in DaVinci Resolve. Since the beginning of the 12th gen launch, we have a lot of new software updates, driver updates, BIOS updates, Windows updates, lots of updates. And now it's actually getting more and more stable and we're getting more performance. So we're running everything pretty much balls to the wall over here to like give you an example what it would be with like one of the best systems. This is 12900K RTX 3090. 64 gigabytes of DDR5 and let's see how good it is on DaVinci Resolve. Motion VFX has an impressive portfolio of plugins for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve that will elevate your video editing process. One of the favorite is MTuber 2. Every YouTuber must have to speed up the workflow. You can create intros, call to action buttons, highlight information and do that within minutes. Use the effects to boost the audience attention and level up your content quality. Motion VFX has a detailed tutorial to ensure the ease of use of of the M2 FX pack. And yes, it also works on Apple M1 Silicon. Use the code TN20 to get a 20% off. Check it out in the video description below. So I'm running Windows 11 Pro with the latest updates. As you can see over here, this is like as latest updates as you can get. My DaVinci Resolve over here is 17.4.3 build 10. So the latest version of DaVinci Resolve as well. And then we have the BIOS version of 0811 from ASUS. So I just updated that one over there. So everything should be like the latest and most stable as we can get on Windows 10. Another thing to interestingly mention over here about this system and why is it so good for video editors in DaVinci Resolve is that every single H.265 or Havoc codec is hardware accelerated. Check this out over here. 12-bit, 10-bit, 8-bit, 420, 422, 444, all of them are accelerated. And this is amazing. Obviously, H.264 isn't as accelerated on DaVinci Resolve, but H.265 is very, very good. Much better than NVIDIA RTX 3000 series graphics cards over here. It's, it's really, really good. When you look at the Premiere Pro over here, can you see how red this is? Only a few H.265 codecs have been um, like actually accelerated, but H.265, there we go, it's there. Previously, Premiere Pro actually supported 10-bit 420 actually here as well as hardware decoding, but it's gone now, so that's weird. So then, let's start from the beginning. Another thing I wanna mention that all of these clips have quite a heavy color grade on, just to like give a little bit more real-world performance over here. As you can see, I've got one node, I think, curves, lot, then we got another lot and noise, direct, uh, noise reduction over here as well, so, it's quite heavy um, like on it. If you just do simple color grade and so on, then that's that. Also, my timeline is at 4K resolution. So it's playing all of those clips back at 4K. Even though a lot of people I know use 1080p timeline, I just want to push this system a little bit more. If you use 1080p, then like I, I've tested, you can just put anything on the timeline pretty much with this system and then just go like that and then it's buttery, buttery smooth. But 4K timeline, that's what we're testing over here. And if you look at the comparison between like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and you're fighting, oh look, DaVinci Resolve is much better at timeline performance, then actually timeline performance of DaVinci Resolve in my experience is working a little bit differently. Now, if you're exper expert, please let me know in the comment section below, but you've got a resolution where the timeline is and all the clips kind of fit into that timeline, played back on that timeline resolution at 24 frames per second, whether your clip is 60, you know, 30, 120 frames per second, you still play it back at 24 frames per second. Whereas on Premiere Pro, you're playing back like the native resolution of the clips. All of my timelines have actually been put to like the native resolution of the clip as well. So when you're playing back 6K on the timeline at 30 frames per second, it's actually playing 6K footage at full resolution and 30 frames per second or 8K full resolution, whereas on the DaVinci Resolve, for example, 8K clip on the 4K timeline will actually be played back at 4K, 24 frames per second. So it's like crushed down a little bit more. It is still to do with the software and we do have to give some credit to the software guys because downsampling isn't as simple as, you know, just like making it less and playing less. It's There's some trickery of software going on still, but it's not quite apples to apples comparison if we want to split the hair. I'd love to know what you're thinking in the comment section below. So looking at the timeline performance here at uh, 30 frames per second over here, this is 4 to 2 10 bit 
I'm quite happy with the timeline performance. It's slightly laggy, but still we're producing a lot of frames over here. This is 25 frames per second and it's no problem here. This is a SI codec, so all intra codec 422. As you can see, 10 bit 422 timeline is pretty good. The 25 frames per second over here, 422 10-bit H.264 is the hardest uh, to play back. So I'm just going to press play. As you can see, we are playing back 24 frames per second. No problem over here. And the NVIDIA GPU is playing back a lot of this color grade over there, as you can see. And the CPU is doing the decoding of the footage. Let's move on to 60 frames per second. This is 60 frames per second, 420 8-bit. It's not so good. Like very similar to Premiere Pro timeline performance, if you've experienced any of that. And the 422 is exactly the same because they're both H.264, so they're not hardware accelerated. Timeline is similar to Premiere Pro because we're both on 4K. Bear in mind in Premiere Pro, it plays it back like 60 frames per second. Here, 24 frames per second, obviously no problem. Look at that playing it back over here video decode I see no problem playing this back now this over here is 50 and 60 frames per second and it is H.265 now so H.265 codex all of these should be uh, hardware accelerated so let's take the color grade off at first look at this 10 bit H.265 no problem 4 to 0 24 frames per second 50 frames per second no problem 4 to 2 absolutely fantastic anything plays back and this is canon r5 60 frames per second 422 plays back absolutely no problem over here like buttery buttery smooth let's put the color grade on as well and then let's see what happens timeline is a little bit more choppy now but absolutely fine let's just press play let's see how our hardware is doing over here okay what's going on in here why is it not playing back on the iGPU. It should be played back on the iGPU over here. Ah, okay. It's finding that the uh, NVIDIA decoders are better for this, so it's playing it back at the moment, look, on the NVIDIA decoders over here. And then the next clip over here, this is 4 to 0, 10 bit as well, but 24 frames per second, still using the NVIDIA decoders. But when you move on to here, 4 to 2, 10 bit, now, boom, we're using the iGPU of the Intel system. And then the decoders are doing nothing over here, but playing back the color grade. That's only what they're doing. And it's just doing a very, very good job over here. Even with this over here, look at this. The decoder is working quite a lot at close to 100% over there. Trying to play that this one back. It's quite hard, this one. 422, 60 frames per second, H.265, and with a color grade. That's insane. Bear in mind, this is DCI 4K over here as well, what I can see. Super impressive, no problem at all. This is 120 frames per second now, and I'm playing back on 4K resolution, and we're getting some problems over here. We didn't quite play it back. Look at this. It's a little bit laggy over here. Let's see what's the problem over here. Okay, we're using NVIDIA decoders over here for the H.264 codec, so... That's interesting. So this is a uh, 422 10-bit H.265. Both of them are H.265, but this is 422. And now we're playing back this on the iGPU decoding. And this is quite smooth. Very similar to Premiere Pro timeline performance. So I've got nothing else to say. Let's see, this is H.264 now. Let's see what it's playing back. Sorry, both of these clips, first two clips, are H.265. This is H.264. And we're just playing these back on the CPU, I guess, because it's 422. Still playing back on the CPU, so no problem over here. It is quite hard to do 120 frames per second, but hey, if we're going to put the resolution to 1080p, which most people are editing at, let's have a look at this now. slightly better let's keep it at 4k let's move on to canon c200 raw i'm gonna press play over here okay we're struggling over here whoa seriously struggling over here what's going on over here 
That's interesting. The cannon rod probably doesn't work as well on the DaVinci Resolve. Premiere Pro was so much better at playing this back. It's interesting. It depends on the codec. It's not just like a editing software. It also depends on the codec. Timeline performance, super, super smooth. Um, no problem over there, but when pressing play, yeah, interesting. Okay, the color grade could be a lot to do with how it's doing because when you're pressing play without the color grade, there's no problem over there and it's super, super smooth. But just the color grade is the hard bit. All the same color grades are on all of the clips, like two lots, curves and uh, noise reduction. Let's see red raw 4K. Okay, this is still interesting. Like, even with the color grade, it's like a little bit laggy when we take the color grade off. Okay, yeah, that's quite smooth now without the color grade. Let's press play, no problem. Yeah, it's no problem. This is quite an easy codec to do. And playback. Red 5K. Let's press play. And look at this. Just can't hack it. Look at the winter resolve. Just could not do that over here. Premiere Pro was much better at playing this one back over here. Timeline is okay. Let me take the color grade off. Let's see if that's any better. Still, even without the color grade, just the 5K is quite not as good at playing it back. Premiere Pro was much better doing that. I think it's to do with Red Raw and DaVinci Resolve. They don't quite go together, which is odd. Does uh, like Blackmagic want you to use their Blackmagic Raw? But hey, I don't know. So Blackmagic Raw then. 6K B Raw. Let's see how good this is. Looks pretty smooth to me. Let's put the color grade on as well. I don't see any problems. It's like so buttery smooth that no problem even mentioning it. You definitely don't have any problems playing back this over here. So red 6K now. Timeline performance. I mean, I guess you could do something, but let's press play. Let's see how we're doing. Very, very laggy. But this was the same on Premiere Pro. I'm not surprised that it can't really play this back. Let's try it without the color grade. Okay, this is a little bit better without the color grade here. Playing back then, well, but still dropping quite a lot of frames. I guess this 6K and Red Raw doesn't work as good on DaVinci Resolve, but when we looked on Premiere Pro as well, just this Red Raw and 6K doesn't work well on the uh, on the CPU. So now, Canon R5, 8K. Let's press play. I guess no problem, but bear in mind, we're play playing it back on 4K timeline, 4K resolution. So if you got this, you shouldn't be worried. Let's put the color grade on as well. Still no problem. Lots of, lots of, lots of uh, like room to play with. What I do want to see or know is how will it do on an 8K timeline? Okay. So now we are on 8K timeline and let's see if it is any better. Whoa. Okay, let's take the color grid off. Let's see how we're doing then. Okay, let's press play. Okay, it's still able to play it back actually when we're pressing play. So that's great, but it's still... It's definitely better than Premiere Pro even at 8K timeline. Obviously, let's put color grid on and that's quite hard to do then. 8K playing this one back and raw. Whew. Interesting. It's actually the CPU or GPU here. That's the bottleneck. Let's see how much voltage are we pulling from the GPU. Whoa. 340 watts currently pulled from the GPU. Yikes. 470 watt, 500, 600 watt pulled from the socket. Yikes. I guess it's still possible. I don't think you should use an 8K timeline for this. Use a 4K timeline and then it's much more like manageable even with the color grade. Let's move on to Canon 8K RAW. With the color grade 4K resolution, it's quite choppy actually. 
Premiere Pro was better at this and we were on 8K timeline there. This is 4K timeline at the moment. But we're able to press, press play and there is some lagging actually. That's interesting. Premiere Pro was actually better at playing this back. Look, we're dropping quite a lot of frames. This 24 frames per second, whatever indicator here. It's like, you know, paid off like the governments, like the politicians. It says whatever they want to say. Uh, not the truth The Premiere Pro was a bit better at doing this. I guess just Red Raw and DaVinci Resolve don't work so well together the Last codec we're gonna try is the 12 KB Raw No problem playing this back 4k timeline uh, Color grade is on we're playing this back. No problem at all. This is ridiculous It's, it's crazy so look, scrubbing through. Absolutely wonderful. So in conclusion, I think this system is just really, really good at DaVinci Resolve. The only size that it didn't do as well was like Red Raw. When it comes to Red Raw and Canon Raw, it's a little bit choppy. Premiere Pro kind of, I think, handled Canon Raw a little bit better, apart from Canon Raw 8K from R5, that was a little bit better over there. But all the mirrorless camera codecs, I think, were very equal. But when it's HR265 codecs, then DaVinci Resolve is better at playing them back. It just worked much, much better. Bear in mind, my color grid here on DaVinci Resolve is much heavier than on the Premiere Pro over there because we have noise reduction, two lots and curves over here. Whereas on Premiere Pro, we just had, I think, two lots and curves. So noise reduction we didn't have on there. But I think it's still very, very good. Has it improved? I don't see much of an improvement since the beginning. I guess maybe H.265, 422, 60 frames per second was a little bit better than in the beginning over there. But I saw more improvements in Premiere Pro than over here. Generally, it's as good as I have tested anywhere really. It was a little bit choppy here and there with the high resolutions over 4K codec, so it gets a little bit, you know, iffy. But if you're using a 1080p timeline, I think you're completely fine editing pretty much anything over here. Maybe if your workflow involves a lot of red raw, then maybe worth skipping this system and maybe Ryzen 5950X is a better choice for you. But generally, I think this is this is very, very good. So now you know how good the 12900K with DDR5 is on DaVinci Resolve. Thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you in the comments section below. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.